and how are dear viewers and welcome to another episode of our channel. Today we are bringing a visit to an exhibition of works of Nikolai Rerich, who was better known as Nikolai Rerich. The exhibition takes place at the New Theatrical Gallery in Moscow from the 10th October to the 10th of March. So, let's begin. Nikolai Konstantinovich Rerich was a Russian painter, writer, archaeologist, and public figure. He was born in St. Petersburg to a well to do Baltic German father and to a Russian mother. Nikolai attended an artist school, and his diploma work is nowadays here. It's called Messenger. That was the first purchase of Rerich's works by Tretyakov. So it is the first Rerich's work in Tretyakov's collection. Trained as an artist and a lawyer, Rerich's main interests were literature, philosophy, archaeology, and of course, especially art. He spent a lot of his life, he spent a lot of his lifetime painting and creating all those masterpieces we are here today to admire. He worked a lot in the historical genre. In his early period, he created an impressive number of canvases. To name a few, building the ships, the morning of Kiev's heroism, the evening of Kiev's heroism, building the city, which is here, and the idols. Guests from overseas is also one of his early works. All aforementioned masterpieces demonstrate the artist's original talent and innovative approach. Rerich created his own style, which consisted of an all-encompassing approach to composition that can be clearly seen here, clarity of lines and laconism, purity of color and musicality, and great simplicity of expression and truthfulness. The artist's paintings are based on deep knowledge of historical material, convey a deep sense of the spirit of the times, and are full of philosophical attitude. recognized by contemporaries as an absolute victory for the artists. For Rory, Perjunt was a play about the beauty and joy of the sacred half. The sketches for Perjunt recall Rory's northern landscapes and evoke images of Karelia and Finland. They anticipate the Latin period of artist life and work. Contemporaries noted that Rory, who had never been to Norway, was able to create the atmosphere inherent in this northern country by the power of his own artistic imagination and intuition. So, here we can see a painting called Selveig Song. It is painted in pastel colors and because of that it creates an atmosphere of complete contentment. It depicts a small wooden house surrounded by pine trees and illuminated by sunlight. In 1912, Rorich created about 30 sketches of scenery and costumes for Wagner's opera Tristan and Isolde. The painting Tristan's ship is a kind of illustration for the first act of the opera. 
Rorich didn't depict the entire ship but only its deck. The deck itself is painted so vividly that one may not immediately notice the lurking figure of the man. The man sits peacefully in a red tent decorated with various patterns. A mast and a sail are depicted in the background. The ornaments on them attract the eye and complement the patterns on the tent. The opera Tristan and Isolde was never shown to the audience. Nikolai Rerich, his wife Yelena Ivanovna and son Svetoslav moved to Kulu in late December 1928. They settled in the vicinity of Nagar on the Himalayan slopes. It was a welcome pause, if not a full stop, in a challenging and dangerous journey through India, which resulted in a collection of minerals, various artifacts from archaeological digs and paintings. The artist did several paintings of the ancient place steeped in many legends. Guga Chohan differs from the Indian cycle paintings by the abundance of festively blooming plants. The artist showed a short springtime in the mountains when apple and almond trees bloom profusely in its entire picturesque splendor. Against the background of blue-purple mountains, the complex shades of pink, pale yellow and soft green with blue shadows of flowers reveal to the world the precious beauty of nature's renewal. Rerich tells us that 35 mountain passes from 14 to 21,000 feet in elevation were crossed by him, but these were the challenges he felt born for, believing that the rigor of the mountains helped a man to find courage and develop strength of spirit. It is in his Himalayan paintings that one most easily finds evidence of the loftiness of spirit and sense of mission that led Rerich to attempt the task he set for himself. In them can be seen the sense of drama, the urgency of a message to send or receive, a traveler to greet, a mission to perform, a path to travel. The towering mountains stand for the spiritual goals that humanity must set for itself. Rarely urges people onto their spiritual destiny. These ideas and those of the artist are reflected in all paintings of this period. It's interesting to note that during the expedition were created 500 pictures and later, inspired by this travel and on the base of his impressions, sketches and memories, he created about 1,500 paintings. The examples of works of this period are Kanchenjunga and Himalayas. In these paintings, Nikolai Rerich, with the help of lines contrasting in bright colors, impeccable composition and combination of forms, conveys to the viewer the greatness of these extraordinary mountains. Strikingly bright colors seem childish and somewhat naive up close, but deep immersion and proper lightning create the illusion of volume and make the picture extremely realistic. It is as if a small window opens to the viewer with a breathtaking view of the Himalayas. Painting Heaven the Battle was written in 1912, in a difficult time for the history of Russia. Rorich is the greatest master of transmitting mental states in a different range of feelings and moods. The painting Heaven the Battle is filled not only with artistic images, 
are the symbols in which first of all the features and the spirit of that era were embodied. Heavenly battle is a kind of battle of light and darkness, the time when the elements come. Rorik's painting demonstrates the beauty of a complex state of nature. The painting St. Pantelim on the Healer was painted in 1916 and dedicated to St. Pantelimon. Executed in 305, Anna Domini, he treated all sufferers free of charge and was usually depicted as young in icons. In Rerich's painting, Pantelimon is a grey-haired old man collecting medicinal flowers and herbs. The choice of topic was not accidental for the artist. The tragic everyday life of the First World War required, according to the artist, high role models. It is symptomatic that the hero of the picture is not a holy warrior, but a wise old man healer. Armageddon is one of his paintings deeply symbolic and reflecting the artistic's attitude to what happening in the world. It was written the year the Spanish Civil War broke out, and it all seems to be in flames. The great city on the mountain burns, a flame leaks its houses and streets, everything is on fire. Armageddon on Earth is a battle between the forces of good and the forces of evil. As the students of Mgimo, we are really interested in international relations and love culture and art. We were deeply impressed by this wonderful exhibition of Nikolai Rebrich's works and we can tell that we were delighted by his um, works, his masterpieces that give us hope for a better future. Nikolai Rerich, Re, Re, Rerich, yeah. Nikolai Rerich, the pronunciation of the surname can be quite challenging. Hi guys, I am currently returning home from the exhibition of Rerich at the Tretikov Gallery. This exhibition was incredible, it was full of masterpieces, but the most striking and breathtaking was the curtain that Rerich made for the Russian seasons. The scale and colors were incredible and it's fantastic that restorers can preserve this work of art. <laughs> 